one of the questions that perhaps we can ask ourselves is how do we make our laws and how we live? Perhaps for a long time we made them on the basis of Judeo-Christian ethics and perhaps we've moved away from that in more recent times. The next four chapters of Leviticus 17, 18, 19 and 20 really constitutes the legal code for the people and how they were to live. And it touches on many areas of personal and public life. But the emphasis isn't simply on civic righteousness, but the emphasis is always on holiness. After all, Israel was God's people and the law was God's law. And the Lord said to them, sanctify yourselves and be holy, for I am the Lord your God, and you will keep my statutes and perform them. I am the Lord who sanctify you. So the motivation for Israel's obedience to these laws had to be more than fear of punishment. The people needed to have in their hearts a desire to please God and a determination to be a holy people who would bring glory to God's name. Obeying the law and having a holy character aren't necessarily the same thing. So these chapters deal with four specific areas of life that must be respected and kept holy. The sanctity of blood or life in chapter 17, the sanctity of sex in chapter 18, the sanctity of the law in chapter 19, and the sanctity of judgment in chapter 20. We've We've already talked a lot about blood and certainly Leviticus talks a great deal about blood in the sacrifices and, and that. So this, um, so this chapter really extends some of those laws. It says there's one tabernacle, one altar, one priesthood, and the people had to respect God's orders in how they killed animals, whether that was for food or for sacrifice. Um, the eating of blood was a particularly um, strict thing because the blood is the life of the creature and um, it must not be treated like ordinary food. This prohibition, although we find it here in Leviticus, actually goes all the way back to Noah in Genesis 9 and is repeated often in the law. And indeed, the early church had some issues to do with this, um, as we find in the book of Acts. Really, I think the importance is to remember um, today, we need to appreciate the importance of Christ's blood that was shed for us. Through his blood, among other things, we are justified, redeemed, washed, sanctified, brought near and cleansed. We were purchased by the blood of Christ and therefore, it's very precious to God. The second area is the sanctity of sex. And um, I think in many ways, the church's traditional view about relationships is becoming one where we are more and more, if you like, of a persecuted remnant. This section climaxes with prohibitions against homosexuality, bestiality, and with the warning that these sins are defiling, detestable, and a perversion. Um, perhaps we can talk a little bit later about where our society's values are and where God's values are and how the church deals between the two. The third area is the sanctity of the law. The Ten Commandments are applied to various areas of life. In, ch in chapter 20, the penalties are, are stated on those who disobey. The regulations given in chapter 19 aren't, chapter 19 aren't in any discernible order, but the one thing that ties them together is their relationship to the Ten Commandments. So there are precepts relating to God, there's rules about honouring the Sabbath, laws against idolatry, laws about the name of the Lord. All these things were important. Okay. And the last section is the sanctity of judgment. 
and about the penalties that were opposed on those who broke God's law. So the same Lord who declared these laws also declared the penalties. There were 15 offences in Israel, which were capital crimes, striking or cursing a parent, breaking the Sabbath, blaspheming God, engaging in the occult, prophesying falsely, adultery, rape, unchastity before marriage, incest, homosexuality, bestiality, kidnapping, idolatry, false witness in a case involving a capital crime and killing a human intentionally. Well, I think that's just murder. God gave his law to restrain sin. He did not reform sinners. The, per the penalties he imposed were for the purpose of upholding the law, not improving the offenders. This doesn't mean, I think, that we should lobby for the death penalty today. While we want to do what we can to see just laws enforced justly, our main task has to be winning people to Christ. Just an aside, Molech was the god of the Amorites. His metal image was heated red hot and little children were placed in his arms and burned to death. What a dreadful thing. People who practiced such idolatry um, were, were not tolerated, were not tolerated at all. Only the gospel of Jesus Christ can change the heart of people. So God's ordained authorities to keep peace and order in society, according to Romans 13. Christians should obey the law, do good, and pray for those in office. God's moral law is always the revelation of his will for humanity. And individuals and nations can't despise God's law and hope to escape his judgment even today. Hope we'll find a, a few things to talk about in all of that.